and on action potential. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe how an action potential occurs and explain its role in neural signal transmission. This is a very high yield topic for the MCAT. So what is an action potential? It's a short lasting event in which the electrical membrane potential of a cell rapidly rises and falls following a consistent trajectory. Let's bring that to life a little bit by taking a look at an actual action potential. This is what it looks like. In this lesson, we're going to go through each part and deconstruct it and talk about the molecular events that lead to this trace here on this graph. So let's first orient ourselves. On the left here, I have a graph of membrane potential to time. This is the kind of graph that you could get from an electrophysiology recording, which is showing you the electrical activity of the neuron. On the right, we have a diagram of the ion channels that are involved in creating the action potential. The state of the ion channels that you see here and the electrical graph correspond to each other. In other words, these are two different ways of viewing the action potential. For the MCAT, you need to understand both the electrical graph and the corresponding ionic events. So let's first look at the graph. We're beginning at rest at the resting membrane potential, which is negative 70 millivolts in a neuron. You should be familiar with this from our last lesson on membrane potential. Let's now look at the ion channels. The purple ion channels are called voltage-gated sodium channels. The voltage part means that the channels open in response to changes in membrane potential. The gated part, well, means there are gates. In particular, there is an activation gate here that at rest is closed and it prevents the influx of sodium. There's also this second pink gate here called the inactivation gate which is responsible for closing the sodium channel during the height of the action potential. It's open at rest but that doesn't really matter because if the activation gate is closed no sodium can get through. Here we have a voltage gated potassium channel and like the sodium channel, it opens in response to changes in membrane potential. However, it only has one gate that is either open or closed. At rest, it's closed, which, as you can see, prevents the efflux of potassium. It keeps it all inside the cell. So let's talk about how these channels open. The voltage-gated sodium channel opens when the membrane depolarizes to threshold. Hang on to these two terms because we're going to talk more about them in a second. The potassium channels, like the sodium channels, are also opened by depolarization, but they open later, after the sodium channels have already opened and the peak of the action potential has been reached. So let's back up and talk about these two terms for a second, depolarization and threshold. To depolarize means to make more positive. Make what more positive? the membrane potential. So depolarization is to make the membrane potential more positive. And threshold is the membrane potential where an action potential is inevitable. So you're going to get an action potential no matter what. It's an all or nothing event. So with this knowledge, let's begin moving through the action potential. We're starting at rest. And if we look at the channels, the sodium channel is closed and the potassium channel is closed. So now, when a stimulus arrives at the beginning of the axon, the membrane potential gradually depolarizes to threshold. So we have a little increase in positive, uh, in positive charge that causes us to reach the threshold potential. Now remember, threshold means an action potential is going to happen. So shortly, lots of sodium channels are going to open. Right now, we have just a little bit open, but in a moment, all of them are going to open. All right, so now the membrane has depolarized the threshold and nearly all of the, the sodium channels in the membrane are opening, allowing for a swift influx of sodium ions. Sodium moves from the outside to the inside because of its concentration gradient, is, uh, and, and this causes the inward flow of positive charge. On the electrical graph, we see the sharp increase in membrane potential, which we know corresponds to the opening of all these sodium channels. This portion is called the upstroke of the action potential. And compared to rest, there is more positive charge now inside the cell than outside. And all that positive charge is going to repel the further influx of sodium as we near the peak of the upstroke. And that's why we stop 
at the top here. It's because sodium doesn't want to continue moving in because it's being repelled by all that positive charge that came in prior. But what goes up must come down. And so we arrive at the downstroke of the action potential. We can see the ion changes, uh, we can see the changes in the ion channels that are responsible for this phase. The activation gates of the sodium channel have closed, blocking the further influx of sodium. And importantly, the potassium channel's gate has opened, allowing for the swift efflux of potassium. It's this outward flow that causes repolarization of the membrane potential. It effectively reverses the upstroke. But the repolarization gets a little aggressive and it, and it drives right past the membrane potential. It kept going and got more negative than the resting membrane potential. And so this section is called the undershoot. It shoots under the resting membrane potential. And the process that got us here is called hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization is the process whereby we make the membrane more negative than it rests. So this is in contrast to depolarization and repolarization. Looking at our ion channels, we can see why this is so. Both gates of the sodium channel are closed, but the potassium gate is still open, and it allows for the further efflux of potassium. So more potassium can flow outward, which brings us even more negative. But just like when you drive past your destination, the membrane potential eventually turns around and comes back to the resting membrane potential. If we look at the ion channels, we see that we're right where we began. The inactivation gate of the sodium channel has reset, and the inactivation gate, of, or in the activation gate of the sodium channel has closed, preventing more influx of sodium. Likewise, the potassium channel has closed, and now the neuron is ready for another action potential. So what we just observed was the action potential event in a small region of the, of the neuronal membrane. But remember that signals need to travel along the entire length of the axon, which can sometimes measure as much as a meter. So how is the action potential propagated down the axon? Well, it kind of happens like dominoes falling. The depolarization from an action potential in a small region of the axon spreads passively to its neighbor. So if we have membrane here, and we just had some action potential set off, some of the positive charge that comes in is going to flow next door to the neighbor. And that flow is going to set off another action potential in that neighboring region because it's going to depolarize to threshold. And so it's kind of like dominoes falling. And we're going to see that whole process in a second. So think about this. Positive flow goes to the neighbor and like a chain reaction, it sets off another action potential and so on and so forth until you get all the way to the end of a neuron. And this is what it looks like. You can see that it marches down the axon, causing a, a chain of action potentials that eventually terminates at the, uh, at the terminal of, of the neuron. And so that completes our discussion of the action potential. In the next lesson, we'll talk about neurotransmission, how the information gets from the action potential in one neuron to another.